Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be talking about creating different images with AI for stock photography and how it can potentially increase your earnings by just understanding this core concept. The reality is, is that the way I teach creating images AI through, through AI software is by the process of AI. I'm not going out there and taking photographs. Um, uh, trust me, I've experienced it before. It's not fun. Um, but I'm not going out there taking photographs. I'm not, I'm not doing any of that. What I am doing is using AI and the better I can get at learning how to control that AI system that I'm using, the better the results I can get. And part of that comes down to understanding what consumers are looking for, right? So here I searched for a picture of pasta. And what I was looking for was actually something like this with some with some text space. A lot of the times these type of images with text space <clears throat> have this gap here. And really the whole part of the reason why I even think of including images with text space comes down to my approach and, and my learning. And what I've come to realize is that there's many, many businesses, right, obviously, that don't use AI themselves, okay? Even though AI is something that me and you might use, there's a still there's still a lot of people who don't use it, and so we're still early on the game in terms of stock photography. Um, but what I'm really trying to say is here is that these businesses they want you know perfected images, places where they can use you know it for banners, for example. This is a perfect example uh, for for something like a restaurant or an image with a banner area. How do I say so? Well, here you could put text and here you could put a button, right? And that's an example of just understanding some basics around design and how this image can play a part. So let's say, for example, Olive Garden, the restaurant chain, is having some sort of sale, like a 25% off on pasta, right? Or 50% off or buy one, get one free. Well, they can literally take this this ad right here, add their own logo or this image, add their own logo like right here and then write the deal in big font, the offer, the coupon, whatever you want to call it and run an ad on it online. And that's an example of how different companies use these stock photos to get that done. So let's go ahead and jump into AI here. This AI, we're using Midjourney. Um, and let's actually see what it takes to create images like this. Now, something that I will say is in my course, the Superstock AI course, I teach both using Midjourney and Leonardo AI. Those are my two mains. The software that you do use will make a critical difference on your output over the long term. You know, there's somebody who might be using a certain software, which I won't name names, but a certain software that, you know, is not that good. And they might get half of, uh, of the approvals that they should have, or even a quarter, right? So software does make a difference. And if you're finding that you're getting constant problems with the rejections, it really has a lot to do with the quality of the image and also the prompt. But really, 75% is the quality of the software that you're using that's dependent on how it gets approved. But you can see here, I kind of implemented a practice for text spaces. And here you can see I have text space with a professional photo of a dish of creamy chicken Alfredo with a sprinkle of Parmesan shot with Fujifilm camera top angle on a, mar on a marble countertop. Which, by the way, this is a prompt that I didn't even create. I just I have a tool that automates creation for me. And um, I think the images came from, let's see here. I don't remember exactly where it is, but I know it's here somewhere. Let's see. Uh, I have like thousands of images created. So yeah, they're from these images. And you can see here when it was created, um, because I included text space, right? It kind of did apply concept for that. Like there's a little bit of text space here. There's a little bit of text space here, a little bit here. This one doesn't really have it. Why is this not perfected? Why doesn't have as much text space as like an image like this? Well, there's certain things I can do that I can give indications for. So I can type in here. I can type in a lot of text space or more text space or even two thirds, right, of text space, whatever I want to write here. But really, more, more of it comes down to how AI is trained. So AI is trained based on other images. And based on the ratio size that I had picked, which is a three by two, 
it only understands to give about that much space, right? And sometimes it might mess it up. And even in a, in a similar case, I have the exact same prompt here. The only difference is my aspect ratio of a six to a five, which is almost a perfect square, almost, right? This perfect square is one by one. So we look at this and there's almost no text space here. None here, none here, almost, right? This is probably the best one, but none here. Although they're phenomenal images, they don't accomplish what I'm actually looking for. So let's kind of see how we can fix this in real time and see if we can get some better results with some training. So all I have to do is take the same prompt. I don't think I'm going to change it, right? I don't necessarily need to. And what I do is instead of going for a three by two ratio size, I can go for a larger one, right? So let's have fun and test this live. So here is a 16 by nine and we'll hit enter here. And actually, let me go ahead and, and uh, remove the 16 by nine in this case. And let me actually increase it to the maximum ratio size, which is a two by one. And let's keep this in a raw format. Let's keep stylization at 300. And let's increase our quality parameters. All right. So we should be pretty decent like that. Let me use version 6.1. There we go. And you can see here immediately as these images are being formed, you can see now more opportunity for text spaces. Now, it's not always 100% good, but look at this image. This image almost pretty much makes the mark. If it was up to me, the only thing that I would really change here is this part here. I would move it to, to kind of like be at the edge and then just have more space for the creator. But nonetheless, it's still a good image overall and I would still upload it, right? So keep that in mind. This image is good as well. It's just not doesn't have as much text space. So what I might do is I might kind of configure my prompt if this is the style that I was forced to use, but thankfully I'm not. I can look at this one, for example, and this has a higher stylization. There's some text space here, which is okay, but it's not really what I'm looking for. Um, here we have virtually no text space. Uh, so here we have some text space if the image was to be uh, in the background, which is, you know, some people like that, some people don't. And then here we have this clearly, this section. Now, let's kind of look for something or try to replicate some detail like this where there's a significant amount. Well, it's going to come from two angles. It's not going to come just from aspect ratios because you saw we manipulated the aspect ratio and literally it didn't improve drastically. In fact, some may say that this aspect ratio was even better. So let's stick to the same aspect ratio, right? And let's make sure it's applied. So there it is. And let's reduce our stylization, okay? Because I want little variation here. And what I also want is I'm going to apply the same uh, prompt, but I will change it in just a minute. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to, let's go and add my quality marker. So get the quality marker or parameter out of the way. It says text space with a professional photo of a dish of creamy Alfredo. So instead of doing all this, we're going to manipulate the text space first. So what's the text space? The text space is the background, which is a marble countertop, right? So I'll take this and I'll type in here text space of a large marble countertop. And then I'll say with a photo of creamy uh, dish of creamy Alfredo on the right hand side just like that. I'll remove all these extra details because this is going to cause confusion, right? And I want usually most of the time when I create prompts, if I'm creating them manually and I'm not automating, like if I'm not just, you know, let's just say I'm going out for a workout, I can click a few buttons and automate different prompts. But if I'm sitting down creating prompts manually, whether it's for testing purposes or whether it's just learning, because I do do that. And then I give it off to automation. When I'm doing this testing and learning kind of process, I like to do things a little bit manually just to test, right? And then after that, when I get into the swing of things, then I'll give it off to automation. But this is clearly a more succinct, a more brief prompt than the one that you just saw. And really, it's more understandable. It says text space of a large marble countertop with a professional photo of a dish of creamy chicken Alfredo on the right hand side. All right. So let's give that a shot. Okay, so once again, let's before we hit enter, let's just check. We have our aspect ratio, we have a raw, we have our stylization decreased by 100. Let's go ahead and hit enter here. All right, and let's wait for the results. And once again, I bet you, based on the prompting, we didn't change anything else really. Stylization went down a little bit, but based on the prompting, we're going to have a better version of the prompt. And like so, or prior to, 
we have these images right here, which was almost a perfect square in terms of the size. However, you know, although the images are great, they don't serve the text space need. And there are people online who are in the Adobe world who are looking, or even, not even just Adobe, right? Any stock photography site who are looking to purchase images with text space for the purpose of corporational use, right? So let's go and head over back here to Midjourney and see how this looks. So immediately we start to get some better results. Look at this image. This image really does a phenomenal job giving us plenty amount of text space. And this was the image that I looked at first. Now I'll say this, this to me doesn't look like a picture of creamy chicken Alfredo uh, at all. Um, and I didn't even indicate pasta to it, so I could see why. To me, this looks like almost like hummus or something like that, but, you know, it is what it is. This image is decent, but, you know, unfortunately, this section here uh, was not needed. Uh, so, you know, there are some things that we could do to manipulate things like this, but this is pretty good, right? Notice how the image gets a little blurry in this section here and stays blurry on this side but here it's a lot more detailed which is actually one of the indicators for some good text space based settings uh, for your images all right let's go back here and this one is like an increased or a zoomed in kind of effect let's go ahead and test some other concepts so i could take this exact prompt right click style raw pick on the same aspect ratio pick the same version Pick a decreased stylization and see and test if that will affect anything, like if it will affect the outcome, decreasing the stylization. But honestly, the prompt is incorrect. Like I need to fix the prompt here. It says a creamy dish of chicken Alfredo. Po uh, no, let's go with pasta. Why not? Let's just allow it to think for itself here. I'll just write pasta. And were we missing something? Yes, we're missing our quality parameter. All right. And look at how instantly that approved, by the way. Uh, but anyways, um, let's go ahead and move this here. And look, we just made some small changes to stylization, right? Notice, this is this is kind of a, a point of view here that you get to see. We brought stylization down, and you can see, right, how it serves the purpose a little bit better. So if you are doing things manually, let's say you're not automating, and you decide that you want to... Uh, you know, create different images. Don't be afraid to test literally the same prompts. Don't be afraid to test different settings. And over time, you'll come out with better results. Notice how we increased stylization here again. And then what happened was the uh, the image kind of kind of zoomed in a little bit more, which is interesting, right? I can go back to this. And it, you know, actually, these images what they're good for is they they have more pasta, you know, in the image. Uh, which is actually better is what I was looking for because this is, you know, not really visible. But I'll go over here and let's go to the uh, stylization here and just move it down to zero. Once again, we're doing testing here. So no need to uh, kind of freak out if something is not perfect the way it is. Because before I get into my automation phases, I just want to go through and just test, you know, just figure things out. So here we have the chicken Alfredo. I'll write the word pasta here once again. And on the right hand side, um, and what we'll do is I'll hit enter. Okay, so that should be kind of where it is. We have stylization at zero. I'm going to take the exact same details and I'm going to, in this case, change stylization to a hundred again, but with the exact same prompt, hit enter. And then I'm going to take the same thing again. Let's go here to dash dash Q one and do we have our stylization? We have our stylization. Let's set it to 100 again. But instead of now creamy Alfredo, we can switch something out. So instead of creamy Alfredo pasta, I can write a dish of, hmm, let's think of something. We can write, uh, let's, let's go for something basic. Instead of a dish, let's uh, professional photo of a pumpkin. Let's use that, a pumpkin. Pumpkin on the right hand side just like that so let's review it text space for a large marble countertop with a professional photo of a pumpkin on the right hand side style raw ar which is aspect ratio two to one and version 6.1 quality one and our stylization of course is at a hundred 
um, and our aspect ratio is a two to one aspect ratio. And let's submit that. Now, while that's being submitted, let's take a look here at some of the results that we've kind of encountered. So you can see here now how things are even changing a little bit more. An image, honestly, like this, I don't think I would necessarily post this image. I would post this. I don't have a problem posting this. Uh, I would post this, and I would post this. It looks a little soupy for for my uh, liking, but there could be someone out there that happens to to uh, to uh, download it, which is not a problem for me. And remember, um, I don't need to make all my submissions immediately. This is something we teach in the course as well, is that you can create, let's say, 700 variations to an image. And those 700 variations may not, nece not necessarily appear the way you want them to, or even a fraction of them might not. However, you still want to publish them as long as, like I said, the quality is good and you have a keen eye for that. Um, the software that you're using is good and it's acceptable, then it's good to go, right? So you can see here, like, this is probably one of my favorites that was created. Let's go ahead and upscale that. Now, just as a little FYI, I do have a automation upscaler that I purchased, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a tool that literally just goes through all the images and upscales it. All I have to do is click one button or two buttons, um, and that's it. You know, it just goes through and upscales each image. Uh, without kind of getting caught. But anyways, let's take a look at this image. This image is pretty good, right? I have a picture of a pumpkin. I can add some text here. And keep in mind, the stylization here was set to, excuse me, I believe uh, 100. Yeah, there we go. It was set to 100. Uh, these images are a little bit different in nature, right? Like you have a countertop kind of look. You have that blurred out image of the faucet. But it's still a beautiful, beautiful shot. It's not what I was thinking, but it's still a beautiful shot. And this was a perfect example of what I mean by saying like, hey, there might be images that might not be in your brain or in your mind or something that you pictured, but you could still sell them anyway. And, and somebody out there is going to want it. This is a decent image. Once again, not what I was thinking because this is from a bird's eye view perspective, but it's still really good. This is a, a, a good image too, you know? So once again, this is how you're testing things through prompting and, and really how sizing affects things because I can take this exact same prompt, right? I can take this exact same prompt and let's um, make sure our stylization exists, the stylization 100, and we can stick to a one by one size. And I promise you, the results will not be the same. So let me go ahead and click one by one, hit enter here. It's, it's not gonna be the same because there's not gonna be enough text space Kind of like something like this. Like, look how, how large this text space is. Because the image is not a square by definition, right? It, it's a rectangle that is more vertical than it is, or excuse me, more horizontal than it is vertical. And um, let's see what we got here. You look at this image. So this image, once again, this looks to me like an Instagram post type image because of its size. I would never use this space here for text. Uh, and that's just me. You're right. So, or, or an image like this, like this, I could see an image like this in a magazine for interior design, but I could not see this serving the purpose as like a banner, uh, especially if I'm trying to focus on the right hand side with an image. So the key to text space based images, like just like the one that you're seeing here, is that the intention is, is that the left hand side from design should be a mirror reflection of what's on the right hand side through spacing. So if the space here represents an object of pasta, let's say, on the right-hand side, there should be something of equal size and text to represent the left-hand side. So I'm not going to have my text to be like this big on the screen because that would be very, very small, right? Uh, that would be unwise to do so. But if I'm going to, let me go back here, um, if I'm going to have larger text, that would fill up the size of that that banner. That's more ideal, and that's exactly what I was talking about earlier in this video. When a restaurant, like you know, whatever restaurant I mentioned, um, wants to add their logos, their text, and use this for a banner, uh, it could work, right? So here's a little tutorial on that. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it was beneficial. I hope it was fun. I'll talk to you guys soon. Keep creating. Keep making that money, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. All right, peace out. Bye.